All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Scott Conant. I am the Outreach and Recruitment Coordinator for the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. And I'm here today to discuss this college here at Western Michigan University, talk about all of our programs and our opportunities for our students. Joining me today, but hidden behind the scenes, is Jacob Harmon. Jacob is the techie that's gonna help me through this if I have any problems. It's also his birthday. So if you wanna write a quick note saying happy birthday, please do so. Happy birthday, Jacob. Sure. All right, hold up. Let's get started here. Okay. Well, if you've never been to the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences at Western Michigan before, we have a unique setup in that we have our own campus. And our campus is located a few miles away uh, from the main campus here in Kalamazoo. It's still in Kalamazoo. But um, I want to talk about briefly what uh, is different about us. First off, all of our programs are fully ABET accredited. ABET is a national and international standard for accreditation that if you're a student, you should always be looking at uh, before choosing your college of choice there. We focus on design, build, and present experiences. And so, of course, engineers design things and they build things. Uh, they make up uh, the world around us. But uh, what is missing from that sometimes is the presentation piece. And we want our students to be very comfortable, not only giving presentations, but communicating in general, because we encourage them to get their big ideas communicated so that they can become realized. We have a lot of hands-on experiences. I'm gonna showcase some of those things pretty soon. Um, we also have a robust on-the-job experience program. Um, I'm getting a message here from from you what do i need to do no i'm just uh well, do you want people seeing the phone i do yeah okay then uh hi hi everybody we're gonna we're gonna meet jacob now hi i'm jacob well that's my forehead you can see my forehead share share now we should be good sure. all right is that better everybody i apologize thanks jacob all right. All right. Uh, we're also going to feature the STEP program, which is a huge student support program. So let's get started uh, with all of these here. First off, our campus, like I mentioned, is about four miles away. It's part of the Business Technology and Research Park, and it was a massive investment in STEM education, in particular engineering education, by the university and the city of Kalamazoo. We feature over 40 companies that are science-based and engineering-based, and they share that campus with us. Now, we have our own facility called Floyd Hall. It is a $100 million uh, uh, research facility that our students get to access and utilize for their learning and for their research. It's important to note that we are a research institution, so all of our students in engineering will produce research before they graduate. We also, uh, for those students who are on main campus and they have classes on both main and the Parkview campus, we have a bus that connects them in a loop uh, and it's never a problem. It runs on a half hour loop all day, every day that we have class. And so our students uh, usually don't have any problems getting out to our courses. So let's talk about our programs. Like I said, we have 14 overall programs. On the engineering side of the house, we have your traditional programs that you'll find at most every engineering school. And those four foundational programs tend to be mechanical engineering, civil engineering, chemical engineering um, and electrical engineering. And those are the four biggest programs that you'll find most everywhere and we're no different in that. What is unique though is we offer some really cool programs. We have one of only two aerospace engineering programs in the state of Michigan. And um, we've been doing aeronautics and aerospace since the mid 1940s, uh, since wartime. And so we've been doing this for a very long time. We're excited about that program. We have the first ever accredited and recognized industrial and entrepreneurial engineering in the nation. And we also have a really cool program called paper engineering. There's only three paper engineering programs anywhere in the country. We've been doing this for a very long time. It's a pretty robust program and our students get to do some pretty amazing things. You'll see some of these programs have an asterisk next to them. I'll get back to that uh, in just a second. Now we're the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. On the Applied Sciences side, we have our engineering, design, or engineering technology programs. And that features engineering design technology, engineering management technology, and our manufacturing engineering technology. And those are unique in that 
The engineering design technology program is built around computer-aided design. It's an entire collegiate program built around that concept. And so we do a lot with product development, new product design, excuse me. Um, and then we have engineering management, which is a hybrid between business and the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. And so our students in that program get a foundation in engineering principles, and then they layer in the business and management side as well. The manufacturing engineering technology features two primary tracks that you can take. One is our plastics processing side, and we have a huge plastics lab with some uh, amazing uh, technology in there. We also have a metal casting side, uh, and so we do board cast metals. Uh, we have a working foundry, one of uh, only a handful in the Midwest of universities that have a working foundry in their facility. And so our students are doing some remarkable things through those programs. Then we also have our computer science program. You'll notice the asterisks again, uh, and our graphic and printing science program. I can tell you right now, the fastest growing program we have is computer science. We're getting a lot of interest in the computer science world. And we're doing some fun things in there. We are about to launch a new cybersecurity program. So I'm excited to, to see that when it takes off next year. Now those asterisks were meant to designate the accelerated degree options that we offer through our college. There are nine programs that you can opt into once you start as a student uh, and go on an accelerated degree track. But what this does in these programs is it will allow you to uh, start taking graduate level coursework in your senior year uh, of, of your undergraduate program. You will pay undergraduate rates to take those graduate level courses and they will count as both undergraduate toward your bachelor's degree and graduate toward your master's degree. And what that allows you to do then is take one additional year and complete the master's degree in these programs. And so right now those are featured in aerospace, chemical engineering, civil engineering, computer engineering, and computer science, electrical engineering, industrial engineering, uh, mechanical engineering, and then paper and printing science. And so it's a really cool option for our students who um, are loving their experience here. It is not something you need to decide yet. We also know that our students will start with us and maybe they don't finish in engineering. But I want you to know that there are a lot of options for you at the university. The university features over 140 programs, and we work really well with all of them. So if you start in an engineering curriculum and decide that's not the pathway for you, that's okay. Our, our uh, advisors work really well with advisors through all the other programs. And so if you want to go into something like communication, business, uh, statistics, integrated supply management, education, we need good people in all of those fields. And so we help get you over to those programs and keep you on track for a degree. So let's talk about mathematics. Mathematics tends to be uh, the language of engineering. Math and science is the language of engineering. And there is a math requirement that we do have. This is in addition to the general admissions requirement that you will find going through the admissions process. Once you are admitted to the university through general admissions, we do a review of your math placement. Now, all of our programs are built that, uh, with the mindset that you will start in Calculus 1. We know that several students will start in Pre-Calculus or even Algebra 2, and this is how it tears out. We first start with your SAT or your ACT math score. And so if you're coming in with a math SAT of 640 and above or ACT of 27 and above, you are automatically placed in at least Calculus 1. If you're coming in with a math SAT of 600 up to 640, or a math ACT of 25 or 26, you'll be placed in the pre-calculus track. If you come in below that at Algebra 2, you're going to be placed in a program called CEAS Preparatory. Now this is meant to provide some enhanced uh, resources for our students to be successful early because that track may take longer um, than the traditional Calc 1 track. That's our initial review. Now, I want you to know that many of you will bring in AP or IB scores. And if you do that, um, we will use those scores to place you in math, uh, even above and beyond what you get on your SAT. And then finally, if you are not happy with your AP scores, or you're not happy with your SAT or ACT scores, and you feel like uh, those don't reflect who you are as a student, we have, I'm going to try to find it here, we have a program called the Alex program. And let's see. Jacob, I might need you again because I already forgot how to do what I'm <laughs> supposed to do. 
uh, are you trying to go to the web page yep. that we have up? Mm -hmm. um, you can just exit out of the PowerPoint and it's already there. Uh, I've already got the web page pulled up behind the PowerPoint. Got it. Sorry, y'all. All right, so let's talk about Alex Math Placement. Can they see it? Excellent. The Alex Math Placement tool is meant for those students who um, want to take some time and do some of the work prior uh, to their assessment date. And so it provides you the opportunity to do online modules at your own pace, in your own place, uh, and to the point where you want to then sit down for a, an assessment and a placement. That placement will be good at Western Michigan University. This is run through our mathematics department. And if you are placed through your admissions program in CEAS preparatory at Algebra 2, you will automatically be getting information about this. But if you're in pre-calculus and you want to take an opportunity to bump up your scores, we have this available for you as well. You'll notice that uh, in the assessment, uh, if you come in at these different percentage levels, you will place, be placed accordingly, regardless of what your SAT or ACT uh, says. Uh, keep in mind that you can never hurt yourself through this process. So if you're, uh, let's say you come in and you um, don't score or you score lower on your Alex test than you did on your SAT, uh, don't worry, we're going to take whichever one benefits you the most. And our advising team is going to work with you through this entire process. Okay, so the website for that is simply uh, wmich.edu slash step slash Alex, A L E. K S. The other thing I want to talk about, get back to my PowerPoint here, all right, is uh, when we talk about advanced placement and we talk about international baccalaureate and uh, dual enrollment, uh, we want you to get those credits to us as soon as you have them. And so if you're in your junior year, you, will, you uh, took some of the uh, AP credits, for instance, or IB uh, higher learning credits, you can get those uh, scores to us right away. Our WMU code is 1902. We would encourage you to do that. If you have dual enrollment, meaning that you are currently a high school student but earning credit at a community college, make sure that not only is that indicated on your transcript when you apply, but that you also have that community college or that four-year school, wherever you're doing your dual enrollment, submit that information to us so that we can do a full review. And then finally, some students will try to get a jump start, and it's wonderful if you want to take summer classes before you start with us in the fall. At that point, I would encourage you to have a discussion with our academic advisors to make sure that those classes count toward your degree. Okay, all of our curriculum flowcharts are online, so you can actually follow along and plug and play as you see fit. Okay, so let's talk about how we support our students. Years ago, the mindset in engineering, especially was to weed out those who couldn't cut it. Uh, those days are long gone. And uh, now we pride ourselves on finding all of the resources that our students need to be successful. Featured in this is our STEP program. All first year students are in the STEP program. It's not something you need to opt into or opt out of. These are all just resources available and built in for our students. It features our academic support programs really focusing on easing your transition from high school into college, especially in an engineering curriculum that is so rigorous. It features free tutoring services, and I'll talk about some of those in a second. Our student cohorts, uh, we really work on personal service for our students. We also have a, a program called Early Intervention, and so if we notice that uh, our students are maybe not going to a certain class, or maybe there's a lot of them that aren't doing well, we will call some meetings and get together and meet individually with the student or in groups as needed uh, early, uh, as early as we can to make sure we get, off, uh, get ahead of any challenges that are there. We also have a lot of social events that we produce for our students because we want you to get out of your room, get out of your study lab, uh, and engage with each other. This is a great collegiate experience. We want to enhance that as we can. Now, I mentioned the tutoring experiences. Those are featured through our student success centers. This provides free academic help through campus. Yeah, there is a student success center in Eldridge Hall, and I'll talk about Eldridge Hall in a minute. There's one in uh, Zimmerman Hall, or, I'm sorry, French in Zimmerman Hall, and that's uh, a residence hall that's near our rec center. And then we have one out at Floyd Hall. Floyd Hall is where the engineering campus is. So we have three different locations that provide free tutoring services. Uh, there are day and nighttime options, and we do tutoring, and it's free for all math, physics, chemistry, 
computer science, most of all of the engineering courses that we have. It's great for independent work when you want one-on-one -on -one time with a tutor, but also for group and team activities when you're learning uh, in, in your classes together. The staff is primarily upper level undergraduate students who took these classes and were very successful. We hire our own students to be our tutors and to help foster that environment of helping each other out to get through some of these challenges. We also have what's called step cohorts. And the cohort system is used by a lot of different universities and a lot of different programs. Uh, we've been doing this now for close to 15 years in our step cohorts. And what we do with these is, uh, let's say you are a first year chemical engineering student and you're ready to start in Calc 1. We are going to place you in Calculus 1 along with 20 to 24 other first year chemical engineering students. And then we're gonna find four, five other classes in that first year and put you all in the same classes together. So what we've done is we've taken this community at Western Michigan University of about 22,000 students and we've distilled this down to a group of 20 to 25 students who are starting where you are, who wanna earn the same degree that you want. And we know that through that process, you're gonna form friendships and natural study groups. And what we've seen in terms of the success out of this is pretty substantial. Students are helping each other be successful. And that's really what we're going for here. All right, I mentioned Eldridge Hall. Eldridge Hall is where we have our engineering house. Our engineering house is, um, is set aside just for College of Engineering and Applied Sciences students. And so when I say engineering, that also includes our uh, technology students and any of our computer science students. This is an option for our students. It is not a requirement. But we do have this as an option. What we know is that by providing the resources and the activities and the 24-7 computer lab that's there, uh, we know that our students find a better path to success. As a matter of fact, our students who live there their first year have a higher grade point average at the end of that first year than our students who choose to live elsewhere. And um, we're finding that that's, uh, it's been a really great thing for our students. And I wanna show you quickly the website for the STEP program. All you have to do is go to wmich.edu slash STEP and you will find all the information about learning communities. We'll talk about how the cohorts are built, how we select faculty staff mentors, uh, some of the activities that we do, how you get signed up for them, okay? We also feature a find a tutor option. And so it comes to our Student Success Center page. And all you have to do is click on the schedule for locations. And it will pull up a chart every class that we provide free tutoring for every day, almost every day of the week, okay? So you can see there's been a substantial investment of resources and time and effort into providing all of this for our students. And again, it's all free. What we really want our first year students to understand is that when you get to college, it is important that you learn to ask for help and seek out resources. In high school, sometimes there's a stigma attached in that asking for help or acknowledging that you don't know something is a sign of weakness. That's not the case in college. When you get to college, and certainly when you start your career, asking for help, seeking out resources becomes a sign of maturity and growth. And we need you to embrace that to be successful in a rigorous program like engineering, okay? I would also encourage you to read more about the engineering house. This will talk about uh, some of the highlights that we do in the community, on campus and off campus, talk about the, the, the room itself and how it's set up, um, and how to go ahead and register for those rooms. So this is a tremendous resource for you. I, I really encourage you to go to that website. Now I mentioned IB and AP, so I, I know I'm backtracking a little bit and I apologize, but I wanna make sure you check out this website too. If you're not sure how to submit your scores, uh, go to this website here for early credit and you can view the transfer guides. You can view all the equivalencies that we have for the AP and IB testing. And um, also there's a, there are, are ways to look at your transcripts online and, and match them up with our transfer guides. Um, for high school seniors, if you are taking your AP exams in the springtime, we don't expect to get your scores until July. Usually that first week of July is when they're released. 
you can have them directly sent to us, or when you receive them, you can submit them to us uh, as well. And we will change your math placement accordingly based on those scores. Okay. All right. So let's talk about scholarships. This College of Engineering and Applied Sciences awards about seven hundred and fifty to eight hundred thousand dollars in new scholarships every year. Um, and so we, I'm going to feature a few of them on here, but this is by no means an exhaustive list. I would encourage you to not only go to our scholarship page through the college website that you see at the bottom of the uh, slide there, but also do that. There we go. Uh, but also go through your um, <clears throat> your gold gateway uh, through your admissions file as well. So if you notice here, we have the Excellence Award. This award is set aside for our students who come and compete for the Medallion Scholarship. There is no additional work that that student has to do other than show up for the uh, competition date. This is not guarantee that they'll get an award, but they will be considered uh, based on our funding for those. We have the Multicultural Scholarship, uh, which we've started a number of years ago. It is a competitive award, uh, but you um, submit an, uh, an essay and uh, all of the information is on the website as to how you submit that essay and what we need you to write about. And we'll have an independent panel review those essays. And those awards are $8,000 each. Uh, and then we have our leadership scholarship. This is also a competitive award. Uh, this is something that we encourage our students to write an essay and also submit letters of recommendation. No more than three, please. And what we're looking here uh, for here are those campus leaders, community leaders, things that you've done uh, whether it's in your school or in your church or in your organization or in your community that displays leadership. And so uh, and we award uh, up to $16,000 uh, based on those as well. Those are just a taste. We have a lot more. Some are departmental specific. So uh, each department, each major may have their own award. We also have some endowed scholarships. So you definitely want to go to that website. The um, deadline to apply for our scholarships is January 31st of your senior year. So uh, make sure you take note of that, okay? There is a significant return on your investment. An engineering curriculum is not easy, um, but your pathway uh, will lead you to something and will take good care of you. Uh, so our five-year average starting salaries uh, ranges um, I think our mid-range is about $60,000 on a starting salary. And then um, after that, you, you grow quite a bit depending on where you are. I, when you look at this, uh, it's important that you look at the fact that all the lines are long. I don't want you to look at paper engineering and say, that's the one I want because it pays the most. Uh, that's not necessarily the right path for you. All of these lines are pretty long and they do pretty well. Some examples of where our graduates have gone recently. We've got, we've got alumni all over the world working for some of the, the biggest companies, the most exciting companies that you can find. And so whether it's SpaceX or Pfizer or Dow or Eaton or Whirlpool, we're, we're everywhere. And um, we get our students known uh, wherever they go. And so we're excited for some of the new advancements and the new places that our students are, are going right now. We really want you to focus while you're here, in addition to your uh, classwork, we want you to find internships and co-op experiences. We know that your internship and your co-op is going to enhance not only your, your education side, but also your professional side. If we find companies that will invest in you on a short term, chances are they're gonna invest in you in the long term as well. About 90% of our undergraduate students will do at least one internship. Many will do two. And you can start doing internships the summer after your first year. Okay, so once you have your first year out of the way, you can start doing recognized internships. Last summer, our average pay was about $20 an hour. On the, on the, on the high end, we had students making $32, $33 an hour. Um, but all of our internships are paid. We do not recognize unpaid internships. Um, we also know that uh, students are interested in co-ops. We do have some co-op options, although it is not a requirement through the curriculum, but we do have some options available. Co-ops take place during the school year. It would reduce the number of credit hours that you can take in that semester or two semesters, depending on how long your co-op is, but you get paid more and oftentimes the employer becomes more invested in you that way, okay? To help you out, we have our career services office. Uh, the university features a career and student employment services office uh, that, that helps everybody here at the university. 
through engineering specifically, we have our own staff as well. Uh, and they're an extension of the, the campus staff. And they provide um, on-site experiences right there in our building. They're part of our advising office. They have career development guides that they create every year to help provide uh, worksheets and samples of how to properly produce a resume, how to prepare for an interview. Uh, they also bring in employers for employer information sessions. These are employers who will come in and uh, they'll meet with our students. They'll usually bring food uh, and they'll discuss uh, the future of their career paths, what they're looking for in a young professional, uh, and how to best uh, be prepared for that next step after college. And so we're talking some of the larger companies that you've heard of, like Chrysler or Google, that have come into our campus to do this. And we also have some smaller companies, some startup companies who are coming in and talking to our students about how to get started in these uh, industries. We also feature Cafe Critique, and that is uh, where we have uh, in our building, uh, at our campus, we have our own cafe. Uh, and uh, the career folks will set up right in the cafe and meet with you one-on-one -on -one and a walk-in basis uh, to, do, uh, to do a critique of your resume. Um, and uh, you can also schedule appointments to sit down and do interviewing skills. Uh, in your last year of college, if you wanna sit down and talk about how to negotiate salaries, we have modules for that as well. And we're gonna help our students starting at orientation uh, before they even start in the fall of the freshman year with getting the mindset of becoming career ready. They also feature a big engineering expo. So our engineering expo uh, has over 120 employers from throughout North America come to our campus and they take over our building. Uh, so much so that we give our students the day off class that day. Now that day off is not for them to stay home and stay away, it's for them to get to that building and get engaged with these employers, even as first year students. Remember, after your first year, you can start internships. This is a great way to start that interaction. And so um, every fall in September, we host this event. Uh, we hosted it this year and it was a, a fabulous event uh, for everybody involved. So we really encourage our, all of our students at every level to get involved here. We also know that our students learn engineering by doing engineering. And what I mean by that is um, if you ever, let's say uh, played an instrument, a musical instrument, chances are you were not good the first time you tried, right? We don't expect our engineers to be great the first time they try this. We provide an environment with all of these labs and all these activities for them to fail as long as they're learning from the failure, okay? And so we do that through our class projects, our design build competitions, all of our student organizations, our research, and all the other activities that our students get to do. So I'm gonna highlight some of our student organizations through the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. We have over 30 of them. Uh, and I'm gonna feature just a few of them, but just know that there are a lot of options for our students. Go on here. One of the biggest ones we have is the American Society of Civil Engineers. And these students get to do a wide uh, array of different activities. They go to national and regional conferences. We oftentimes will host conferences here where they bring in speakers from industry. But they also feature two primary competitive teams. One is the concrete canoe team. You'll see that on the left side of your screen, some examples of our concrete canoe. Yes, it floats. Yes, they race it. And usually it makes it back in one piece, and we do pretty well with that. We also have a steel bridge competitive team. You'll see that on the right side of the screen. Uh, and so that involves a competitive, a timed competitive atmosphere where you bring in your materials and you are timed to build and then um, produce uh, a structure that will be tested with a load. Uh, and our students not only compete and do those things, but part of the competition involves them um, pr producing a professional presentation. And so they will talk about uh, the use of materials, the design elements, the safety features, all the things that go into what they build. Another really cool organization is our American Institute for Aeronautics and Astronautics. And this is our team that builds a UAV a drone and they take them to competition. They get to compete in Wichita or Tucson, depending on the year. Uh, and every spring they head out west for that competition. We also now have a rocketry team that is doing great things. They got their certifications last year and uh, they're really, uh, I almost made a, a bad joke, but they're taking off right now. The rocketry team is doing some great things. All right, we also have Engineers Without Borders, which is a group of engineers from multiple disciplines who uh, get engaged on a, on a global scale. 
And so here you see some examples. We had a team of students last year go to Nicaragua to work with a local village there on um, bettering their water filtration systems and so they can keep people safe and happy. Uh, and what's nice about this organization is not only do they do international work, but they also stay local. And so there's a lot of sustainability work that they're doing here in the Kalamazoo area and throughout Southwest Michigan. And they get engaged on a different level. Uh, oftentimes it's not in a lab. Oftentimes, as you see, it's out in the public and in nature. We have our Western Aerospace Launch Initiative, known as WALI. And WALI students get to build CUBE satellites. And this is a CubeSat model that you see in front of you. Uh, these students are working with our partners at NASA and Enable Aerospace to produce a CubeSat mission. And we're hopeful that by 2022, we will have a Bronco satellite in orbit. And so our aerospace engineers are pretty excited about uh, all of the engagement opportunities that they have here. They also get to go to the uh, small CubeSat or small sat conference. It's in Utah every year. And so every summer they get to go out and participate in that as well. One of the most well-known programs is our Society of Automotive Engineers. It's a very large organization featuring two racing teams. And so we have our Formula Racing Team and our Mini Baja Racing Team. And uh, oftentimes if you come out to our building, one or both of these vehicles will be on display in our lobby. Uh, they take them to competition all over the country and in Canada. As a matter of fact, our Baja team is uh, gearing up to head over to Montreal at the turn of the year. So we're excited for what our students get to do there. But our students do all the design, all the fabrication, uh, and uh, of course the testing and racing as well. We want our students to get involved in the entire process to see it from beginning to end. And finally, we have our Sunseeker solar car. Uh, our Sunseeker team is a very unique program. We've been doing a solar race car now since I believe 1990. So we've been doing it for quite a while. These students design and build and test a solar powered endurance racer, uh, which then needs to be modified every other year to do a short track race. And so it's a really cool opportunity for our students to do not only some unique things, but engage on multiple levels. They have to do fundraising, they have to do presentations, uh, they do educational outreach, and of course they do design and build uh, throughout this whole process. So, um, Last year, we were involved in the short track race, uh, which I believe was down in Fort Worth, Texas. The year before that, we did the national race. And so we compete in the North American Solar Challenge. I am not sure what's gonna happen this upcoming summer in terms of where the race is going to be. The race generally is a 1,500 to 2,000 mile endurance race, entirely powered through solar energy. So we encourage you to come over and see us so you can check out the car. They're in the middle of building the new one right now. To get a full list of our organizations, we have the website there. So if there's anything of interest that you wanna know about, whether it's the Bronco Robotic Club or the Society of Women Engineers or the National Society of Black Engineers or anything else that I don't have on here, uh, the full list will be there. And what's really great is that if you have a passion, you have a hobby, and you wanna bring that to us and start your own organization, you can definitely do that. Uh, we actually have a paramotoring association now at Western Michigan University. It's a team of students who build paramotors and they do some amazing things uh, with that. And uh, we, we have new groups coming in all the time uh, to add into our template. So there's definitely ways to get involved. One of the big questions I get frequently from families is, what kind of computer should I be bringing uh, for my son or daughter to be successful with? Uh, we don't have a requirement with the exception of our computer science program. Our computer science program uh, students uh, are required to bring a laptop and they'll be getting information about that once they're admitted to the program. But you see here our minimum, our minimum specifications, our recommended, uh, recommended specifications, I would always lean toward the recommended. Um, we don't make any money from these recommendations. We just know that our students need them uh, to stay ahead of the game and be successful. If you have your own laptop right now and you don't think you can afford to get a new one before you start as a first year student, <clears throat> bring what you have. We will make it work. It's important to know that all Microsoft products are available to our students at no charge. Okay, We will have everything there for you. We do not have a, a, a preference between Mac or, or, um, uh, or HP or anything like that. So bring what you have and we will make it work for you. 
It's important though also to speak with the students that you're going to be joining uh, when you start your college career uh, and see what's working for them as well. But laptops are great. We really encourage them here and you can find out more at that website listed there. Okay, I have talked a lot. Are there any questions from you guys? From you too. I think there's two people on here maybe. Okay, to reach me, sorry about that. All right, Anthony, I see you out there. Any, uh, any questions for me? Okay, okay if you have any questions, here's my contact information. You can call me directly. Uh, that's my office number there. And the best way to reach me, because I am on the road frequently, is the email address listed there, scott.conant at wmich.edu. Please take note, my name is spelled with one T, not two. And so we encourage you to, uh, to reach out with anything. If you have not taken a tour, we offer tours nearly every day except for Sunday, and I would always encourage you to come and see it. Uh, see it for yourself, talk to our students who are there, get a sense for what it's like to have a separate campus, uh, especially with the research focus that we have. Um, and, and please note that uh, we don't offer housing at that campus for engineering. Because we share it with 40 other companies, we don't need student housing out there. And, and quite frankly, the companies don't want student housing out there. We want you to live in the engineering house on main campus so you can be a part of that community and feel part of this campus. So that's the end of my presentation. If you have questions, please reach out using the contact information provided. And uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Go Broncos.